Montreal, but as a backup. How much will we see Vernon Adams tonight against his former team? Now, meanwhile, on the opposite side, Trevor Harris said this week he would like to see dominance against the Lions after a tough loss last week to the Ottawa Red Blacks. It is Friday night. It is Friday night football on TSN, and we are thrilled that you are here with us as we welcome you inside Studio 6. It's Kate Burness alongside Davis Sanchez, Dave Naylor, and Milt Stiegel. We saw him off the top now. VA back in Montreal after being traded to the BC Lions. We know they needed QBs, but how much of them will we see tonight in your opinion, Dave? You know, I think the game is going to dictate this, and, and part of the reason is the, uh, the BC Lions have an advantage in this. This is not them playing their third string quarterback we have to look up see who this guy is he's never thrown a seat Antonio Pipka's been in this league since 2017 yep. he's completed 121 passes in the Canadian right. football league, which doesn't sound like a lot but would compared to some of the third stringers we've been <laughs> seeing at other times yep. that's, that is a lot yep. so look I think he's going to get an opportunity to keep himself in this game but I know the Lions feel confident with where Vernon Adams is if he needs to come in they won't hesitate to go to him. I, I think as you alluded to I think we'll see Vernon Adams when Antonio, if Antonio Pittman is not playing well. I mean, these BC Lions are trying to maintain their position. Will they be able to catch, catch the Winnipeg Blue Bombers? Probably not. But they still want that home playoff game, so they know they need a solid quarterback. Reason Vernon Adams is there. Another reason Vernon Adams may not be starting, because the game is in Montreal. How hype would Vernon Adams be oh. starting this game? Maybe too hype. So I think we'll see him, and it all depends on what Antonio Pittman does. Defense stand up. That's what uh, mm. that's what's going to have to happen for these BC Lions. Six out of the ten games, they held teams to under 20 points. Now this this team, this defense has played good football. Number two ranked defense in the league, and you've been on. We've all been on some teams that struggle offensively, whether it's quarterback injuries or right. for whatever reason. Uh, but this defense has got has got to play well if they want any chance to win this game. It's going to be on Ryan Phillips and that defense that they feel good about themselves. Right. Let's see if they can stand up and play good enough football to carry this team until their quarterbacks get comfortable. All right. Kudos to the panel last week. We finally got it together for the same game parlay presented by FanDuel. I don't know about this one, gentlemen. <laughs> you're, you're not Chess, feeling it? I, no, Chess, I like this. Antonio Pipkin, Anytime TV. I really dislike the next two because you're not going to have two receivers going over, right, in the same game with a backup QB, but you know what? Stranger things have happened. Yes. Dave, you like Brian Burnham over the 57 and a half. Milt, you like Lucky Whitehead going over as well. We will get you to Molson Percival Field after this with Rod Smith and Dwayne Ford. The Owls have dealt quarterback Vernon Adams Jr. to the BC Lions in exchange for a 2023 first round pick. Is here to help out any way I can, man, help keep this train rolling. What VA brings to the table is like no other. He's the most dynamic quarterback in the league. Just try to win games as a team, you know what I'm saying? Uh, whether it's Pip out there at first or whenever I get my chance, um, that's it, just want to help win games. Thank you, kid. Beautiful late summer Friday night here in Montreal. The Alouettes played here last week and lost to the Ottawa Red Blacks. The BC Lions coming off a bye after their first game without Nathan Rourke was a loss to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So interesting contest we have here because it's a return of two former Alouette quarterbacks. Antonio Pipkin Dwayne gets the start, but the big story, Vernon Adams, didn't take long for him to come back to Montreal after being even just dealt away from the Alouettes last week. Yeah, VA traded during that bye week, obviously, is the, the BC Lions with the loss of Nathan Nathan Rourke looked to add a little bit of experience and another dynamic player at that quarterback position and probably a little weird, weird for Vernon to be on the other side of the field from this guy Eugene Lewis one of his best friends in the league certainly and his favorite target one of the CFL's best in 2022. Danny Machocha three and four as the head coach of this team took over for Kahari Jones who started the season at one and three and Rick Campbell of course visits to Montreal a lot more commonplace when he was the head coach of the Ottawa Red Blacks. And Trevor Harris was his quarterback in 2016 to 2018 but BC back they've won five of their last six visits to Montreal so the three hour three time zones don't affect the 
Lions too much when it comes to this place. And there's another newcomer, Terry Williams, former Ottawa Red Black. He was also just recently traded over to BC from Ottawa, and he is on the return as Antonio Pipkin, who had some starts in 2018 and 19 for the Montreal Alouettes, gets the start after relieving Michael O'Connor, who got hurt two weeks ago. Yeah, and for me, Antonio Pipkin is a, a guy that I have always found intriguing as the at the quarterback position. Obviously, he's had opportunities in, in Montreal, had an opportunity shot with Toronto last season, but I, I still think that there's some untapped potential to this guy. strong arm, athletic quarterback. But I think with the the right fit and perhaps an offensive coordinator like Jordan Maximic we could see him do some positive things is James Butler in the backfield and a great receiving core to work for they fake the run and Pipkin well he runs himself and he has been known to do that a good run as well for the BC quarterback sliding in for a first down up at the Lions 50 and we'll take a look at the BC Lions offense around Antonio Pipkin protection is going to be important for him we'll keep an eye on Kent Perkins second year man starting at the right tackle spot tonight and of course one of the go-to receivers one of the great stories in the canadian football league here in 2022 dominic grimes working out of the slot gets it up to the lions 49 antonio pipkin watch for him and his willingness to take off with the football alouette fans remember him doing that a lot when he was with montreal throwing that time near midfield it falls incomplete intended for Keon Hatcher and in on the coverage new Alouette coming over from Edmonton the feast lion yeah and a couple of changes defensively for the Alouettes in this one Mustafa Johnson checks in at defensive tackle we'll still see Mike Wakefield as part of that D-line rotation former lion Micah Awe holding down the fort in the middle of that linebacking core and as mentioned the feast lion gets the start on the corner this week coming over from Thomas Costigan in the Avery Ellis with Thomas Koskin in the Avery Ellis trade with Edmonton. The starting lineups are brought to you by Expedia. It is second and 10 BC. We're just underway here on Friday Night Football. Pitkin has lots of time. Delivers to an open receiver down around the Montreal 50. It is Brian Burnham with the catch and a gain of 11. Another Alouette or another Lion first down. Well, we talked about the importance of that protection and Pipkin's got plenty of time to go to work. Here, you're, you may not see the, the reads happen quite as quickly as we did when Nathan Rourke had this offense firing on all cylinders. But the O-line provides time, and Pipkin delivers to a guy he described as the future Hall of Famer in our conversation with him this week, Brian Burnham. 103 games consecutively with a catch now for Brian Burnham in his great career. From the Montreal 50, handing off this time, it's Butler. Good gain as well, driving down near the Montreal 40. And that looks like it's enough for yet another BC first down. Impressive drive to start here at McGill. Well, James Butler, a guy who started this season with a bang. You think back to that season opener against Edmonton in which he was absolutely on fire. He continues his strong play here. Looks like we've got Montreal a little off balance defensively in the early going. Mixing it up too. A couple of impressive runs. First Pipkin and then that one by Butler to go along with the, the passes. And yeah, Butler had four touchdowns before the first half against Edmonton in that season open. From the Montreal 40. Running again. It's Lucky Whitehead on the sweep. And another impressive gain on first down. It'll be second and short. Close to a 10-yard gain for that explosive receiver, Lucky Whitehead, who had a long touchdown reception the last time the Lions were here in Montreal. Once again, as you see so many teams in the Canadian Football League getting their receivers involved in that run game. Pepkin keeps it on the second and short. And certainly looks like he has enough to get another Lions first down. Yes, indeed, as signaled. Dave Foxcroft, the referee for this one tonight. Settled down and sorted out on the field. Antonio Pipkin was listed number one in the depth chart for the Montreal Alouettes to start the 2019 season. He got the start in Edmonton. He got hurt in the third quarter, so the backup Vernon Adams came in and played so well that he basically took that number one job and had a great season, nearly 4,000 yards passing in 2019 for the now ex-Alouette. 
Pipkin. And that one on first down. Intended for Javon Katoy, and it falls incomplete. Yeah, that one got away from looking almost like he changed his mind mid throw there a little bit. As that one falls short. But yeah, there are two careers that have been intertwined. If you see Vernon Adams on the sidelines, he and Antonio Pipkin first becoming teammates here in Montreal when Pipkin came into the league in 2017. It was Adams who moved on first, then made his way back to Montreal. Pipkin was still here. Second and ten. Knocked away. Batted down by Wesley Sutton coming in. And that will stop the BC Lions opening drive as Sean White will come on and attempt a field goal. You see Sutton 37 blitzing off the edge from his halfback position. This has become something of a habit for Wesley Sutton in recent weeks. The Alouettes defense under Noel Thorpe started to get him a little more involved in that blitz package and it's really proved to be a, an area of strength for Sutton. Good anticipation there. Jumping, getting the hands up. Really having an impact. Sean White tied with Rene Paredes of the Stampeders for the best field goal percentage and he just Pulled ahead there, going 18 for 20 now on the season. One for one of the night. Three points on the board. Trevor Harris coming up for the Alouettes here in Friday Night Football from Montreal. Trevor Harris has been the Alouette starting quarterback this season since taking over from Vernon Adams back in week two in Toronto. 22 for 29 for 256. Two touchdowns, two picks last week against Ottawa. Yeah, a guy definitely looking for a, a bounce back game. Here you heard the talk from the panel of Trevor wants to see dominance against this BC Lions defense this week. His running back is Jesher Nantwi. That's a hole, Antwi. Product of the University of Calgary picking up 10 yards exactly. And a first down for Montreal. Take a look at that Montreal offense. We'll keep an eye on Landon Rice at the right tackle spot. One of a handful of Canadians starting at tackle. Reggie White really starting to establish himself as that solid number two option to Geno Lewis in the Alouettes receiving core. Walter Fletcher was the running back on that previous play. With a 10 yard gain and a first down rolling out to his right. Tries to just dump it inside and it falls incomplete intended for Tyson Philpott. Well, and on cue, we see Nathan Cherry, the University of Saskatchewan product, number three overall pick in this year's CFL draft, making his first start. A little flip of the ratio for BC that we'll talk about. Ben Vladek out of UBC continues to start at middle linebacker. With an injury to TJ Lee in the secondary. Second year man Jalen Edwards Cooper draws in on the back end. He'll play at the halfback spot. TJ Lee. Suffered that hamstring injury and a touchdown by Kean Schaefer Baker two weeks ago. Oh, pressure. Obum Guachim nearly got Harris, who was able to dump it off and complete it to Herji Mayala. Not enough for the first down. It does get across midfield into Lions territory. It'll be third down. You see both ends doing a nice job collapsing the pocket on Harris, forcing him to step up. Get rid of that ball quickly. And so Joseph Zima will make his first punt of this game just outside his 40. Terry Williams, the newcomer to the BC Lions as they try to improve the return game, will receive this one. Ex Ottawa Red Black inside the Lions 10. Flag comes out in behind him on that return as he gets it up across the 20. They went 48 yards to set up a 36 yard field goal the last time. There's Vernon Adams, still Antonio Pipkin at quarterback for BC. Vernon Adams.
Adams just came off the sixth game last week after being sidelined since early August with tendonitis in his throwing elbow. With more of the history of that injury, let's get down to the sidelines and John Lou. Well, thank you, Rod. In conversation with TSN this week, Vernon Adams Jr. told us that he started experiencing sharp pain in his throwing elbow during the second week of training camp. It was a type of pain that he had never experienced before, causing him to report it to the training staff, who treated it with massage but didn't alleviate the problem. Adam said the pain persisted through weeks one and two, and when he was benched, all the while the pain affecting how he could properly throw the ball. Now, once he was uh, on second-team offense and practices, and by the middle of July, Adams was becoming more insistent with the training staff to look more carefully at his condition, but it wasn't until he approached Danny Machocha near the end end of July that Machocha ordered up an MRI for War Adams which revealed tendonitis and a strained muscle in his throwing elbow forcing him onto the six game IL. But until that imaging revealed the problem Adams said that he was upset that his condition hadn't been looked at more thoroughly considering that Procedure. he was supposed to be the franchise's uh, uh, excuse me the uh, the franchise's number one quarterback. Guys. Thank you, John. And you could tell he was frustrated by the way that played out. And by the way, we will have the Alouette's reaction to what he had said right here now from Danny Machocha, who said this to John, regardless of who you are and your status on our team, the medical attention is the same for everyone. We did the best we can do with him and made sure he was always ready to play. He never expressed that frustration with me. I'm sure being hurt affected the competitor in him from Danny Machocha, the uh, coach and GM of the Alouettes. From the end zone. Under the hit. Taken down for the safety. Mustafa Johnson with the sack of Antonio Pipkin. And that gets Montreal on the board. Well, Mustafa Johnson making his presence felt here early on in his tenure with the Alouettes. kind of keeps the motor running and again always the challenge for the offensive line that can't see where their quarterback is as he starts moving around in behind them defensive line has a little bit of advantage Johnson knew what angle to take whereas the blocker didn't necessarily know what angle on which to protect debuting with the Alouettes first year out of the Colorado Buffaloes Mustafa Johnson the sack for the safety and now a 3-2 Lions lead and we'll get another look here at Mustafa Johnson from his defensive tackle position. Starts off, gets passed off from the guard to the center. And there you see as Pipkin kind of gets pushed to his right. Peter Godber is still protecting the inside of that pocket, the inside of the formation. Johnson just continues upfield to the outside. Put a couple of points on the board for his Montreal Alouettes. And the Alouettes will get the ball too, of course. After the safety is given up by BC, they will kick it from their 20. Adarius Pickett and Chandler Worthy are back to receive it. And a one-point game now as it is heading Worthy's way down around the 25. Chandler Worthy bumps into his own man. Think about what a spark plug Chandler Worthy was for these Alouettes to start the season. He had come over from Toronto during training camp. Had returned touchdowns in his first couple of games in red, white, and blue. Chandler Worthy looking to be back to form with this one as you see him outrun the angle on Akeem Johnson to turn that one north-south. Back of the hands of Walter Fletcher. Another good hole for Fletcher. Driving down towards the 25. A good gain on first again for the Alouettes. In scoring position now, too, after that great return by Worthy, who has two kickoff returns for touchdowns this season. Yeah, it's the importance of special teams in this league really can't be overstated. You have a returner like Chandler Worthy who gives you a short field like this offensively. That's a huge lift. Oh. 
So Jeshur and Antwi in the backfield now. On a second and short. Antwi met though. Right at the 25. Needed to get beyond that. Up front, Josh Banks. They're helping out and Manny Ragamba. The linebacker as well. So third down it is. Didn't quite make it. Well, so the true short yardage unit will come in now with Dominic Davis at quarterback looking to take a shot at this. Some shuffling of personnel packages for Montreal in recent weeks. They're a team that doesn't really have a true fullback on their roster at this point. Davis is specialty. Left side, no problem for the big-bodied quarterback as he does indeed get more than enough for the first down as this drive continues for Montreal. Yeah, big push here. The Alouettes leave absolutely no doubt. Davis sliding to his left, getting in behind Philippe Gagnon and Nick Callender. The rookie Nathan Cherry taking him down at about the 18 of the Lions. And this is what he's done against me. He's had a lot of success against the Lions, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. When he talked about wanting to rebound against BC and what he felt was a, uh, a disappointing performance against Ottawa last week. Past history, maybe giving Trevor Harris a little reason to feel confident. Gain of four, Fletcher, second and six. Movement on that line by Josh Banks, and the flags come out as Harris just throws it away. Offside, BC number 92. It's a five-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. And only one yard to go on a second and short now after that offside by Banks. Banks caught. Trying to get a quick jump there. Not sure whether Trevor Harris is mixing up his snap, snap counts or not, or if that was just a case of Banks twitching a little early. Hey, Vernon, you playing tonight? So Davis is back in on the second and one. And they go with a reverse for Eugene Lewis, who throws off it into the end zone, but picked off and then popped up. Gary Peters looked like he had the interception and then fumbled the ball, but it looks like the Lions do have the ball at their own five. They went for the reverse and the pass for Lewis. It was broken up initially. And then broken up this way with an interception by Gary Peters. Popped up the ball, but it still belongs to his BC Lions. We'll take a look here. Boom Guachem from his defensive end spot is the man who kind of messes up this play. And typically from a Montreal point of view, you're going to try and let him get upfield a little bit, but then somebody's got to peel around to pin him inside to al allow Eugene Lewis to break contain. Watch him is left completely free, shoots into the backfield, disrupts the timing for a non-quarterback. Not surprised to see Lewis panic a little bit on that throw. James Butler, the ball carrier, as Mike Jones takes him down for a short game. But yes, that play denied the Alouettes a chance to take the lead. They were at the BC 13. Watch him straight through into the backfield. And the, you know, the timing I thought was a little clunky as well between Antwi and Lewis on that, uh, on that exchange as well. A little bit telegraphed, not that smooth. Eugene Lewis already with a couple of touchdown passes on his career resume, but now an interception. That was the second pass he'd thrown this season. Here's a throw by Pipkin. Deep down for Lenny Whitehead, who nearly had it. Up at the 45, reaching and just beyond his outstretched arms. Yeah, and I think Lucky Whitehead might have misjudged this one for just a moment in the air as it we all know about his blazing speed. And it looked like he kind of settled a little bit for a second and then realized, ah, 
this one's going to be farther away than I thought. He tries to lay out, but it's just off the fingertips of the Lions speedster. Pretty well-placed ball by Pipkin. Very close to catching Lucky Whitehead there, but instead, after they got the turnover, it's a quick two and out. And so they'll have to punt it away. Stefan Flintoff, the leading punter in base and in net average in the Canadian Football League. We'll need a good one here. And deep in his end zone. Pressure's coming too. Was that partially blocked? The rules out of bounds up around the 25, so hardly it. Zach Lindley just was moving in there, but. Hey, Vernon! Yeah, the pressure clearly affected the punter Flintoff. As Lindley came up the middle, the deep backs had to hold him on this one. Watch the deep backs. Jordan Williams wraps the arm around the waist. So Flintoff just shanked it left. And when Montreal last had the ball, it was at the Lions 13. And just one possession later, they're in pretty good shape right now, starting their drive at the BC 25. And the key there is when you're one of the deep backs, you've got to protect inside out. I think Jordan Williams got drawn a little too far outside. Left Zach Lindley a lane. Back to Cam, Julian Brandt. And he gets it quickly down to about the 10-yard line of the BC Lions. Again, a 15 for the third-year man out of St. FX. Yeah, getting an opportunity to showcase some of his athleticism this season big bodied receiver who has tremendous speed the Alouettes take advantage of it on this play you see not just getting the wheels turning but a guy who can run through some tackles as well Antwi and Fletcher in the backfield for Montreal now on a first and goal just inside the 10 Payson Philpott Luchez Purifoy takes him down but It'll be a second and goal right around the one for the Alouettes after that reception by Philpott. And you watch back-to-back -back plays there, and we'll talk about it a little bit as this game goes on. But, you know, how about the offensive skill contributions from the Canadians on the Montreal Alouettes roster this year, an area where they look to upgrade? You see Kai and Julian Grant. Kai and Julian Grant more involved in Tyson Philpott. Number nine overall pick. Dominic Davis gets it up of it to break the plane and give the Montreal Alouettes the first touchdown of this game. And their first lead. Now the Alouettes take the lead on the scoreboard because they have dominated the field position battle here in the first quarter of this football game. Big return by Chandler Worthy, followed by a few good offensive plays that put them in close. And despite the turnover, they get a nice stand by their defense, a good job by their special teams, where essentially the rush forced a poor punt out of the end zone, giving Trevor Harris and the offense a short field to work with here. And they'll go for two, a five-point game right now, so to see if they can make it seven. Handing off doing at all on that two-point try boom watch him in there to stuff up the run and so that two-point conversion try fails and it's an 8-3 ball game Alouette's in the lead that one went according to plan for Dominic Davis yeah we'll go back here to the punt Zach Lindley comes from the outside gets pressure on Flintoff he rushes that kick, shanks it short field for Trevor Harris. And Julian Grant on the hitch screen, moves him a little closer. Tyson Philpott follows that up to set them up on the doorstep. And Dominic Davis. I think we've talked before, the new fantasy pirate, so to speak. Stealing points on those short yardage touchdown plunges. Yeah, playing fantasy football, always got to watch those <laughs> short yardage quarterbacks. They don't get many reps, but when they do, they can count. For Dominic Davis, by the way, 
his 10th touchdown of the season. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Bouncy, 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 bouncy. Terry Williams on the return for BC. And gets tripped up as he gets across the 30. And we wondered when we'd see Vernon Adams. It hasn't taken long. This is possession three for BC after Pipkin was sacked in the end zone, giving up a safety. Vernon Adams is in for his first reps as a member of the BC Lions barely a week after he was traded there. And Vernon Adams, a guy whose Canadian Football League rights were initially owned by the BC Lions. He was on their negotiation list, traded to Montreal for a first round pick. He's had a little bit of a whirlwind tour of the Canadian Football League before being shipped back to BC. How strange a sight is this for Alouette fans watching Vernon Adams on the other side now here in Montreal. Oh, he's taken down. Some ex-teammates making it hard for him. And Mike Moore and Nick Usher. So first play, Vernon Adams is sacked. Well, Moore and Usher, they're two defensive ends. Combined to get through on this one. Maybe strange for Alouette's fans to see Vernon Adams in different colors, but they seem completely comfortable cheering when Vernon Adams gets sacked. Good start for the Owls' defense against their former teammate. It's just business, right? Strictly business. Second and 17 for the sack. The loss of seven. Adams with more time. Throwing, and it's incomplete, intended for Brian Burnham. So two and out for Vernon Adams in his first possession as a member of the BC Lions. And that was also the final play of the first quarter. The Lions started well, but the Alouettes struck back. Good return, Chandler Worthy. Flipping the field, ultimately ending up in a touchdown for Dominic Davis and an 8-3 lead Friday Night Football on TSN after one. Through one quarter, it's an 8-3 Alouette lead. And there are the numbers, and they're all very close, except for the sacks by the Alouette, Swain. And we wondered how Rick Campbell would handle the quarterback situation. And true to form, he did say he wanted to see both play. It was just after uh, three possessions he put in Vernon Adams. And depending on how things go for the Lions offense, I imagine we're going to see more of Pipkin and Adams in this game. Yeah, likely. It, it, it's tough to get a read, particularly after Pipkin took that sack in the end zone. You wonder how the, the coaching staff felt about that, that as a veteran guy, he didn't get rid of that ball if maybe that expedited uh, Vernon Adams Jr. getting into the game. But as far as the big picture of this one so far, though, as we look at those stats from the first quarter, fairly even except for th something that isn't shown, which is field position. Right. An area in which Montreal dominated the opening 15 minutes. Because of the difference in the return game, Chandler Worthy had one over 50 yards. The Lions near the bottom of the league in returns. They want to get better at special teams, that department. They have the best punter in the CFL statistically right now, who gets a much better one off this time around. Flintoff to Chandler Worthy. He gets up across the 40, so up near the 45, and the Alouettes have enjoyed good field position in this game so far. Trevor Harris coming back on. Harris getting ready to roll. We've seen Montreal get their run game involved a little bit here. I expected to see them lean on that a lot because, you know, out of a loss, you look to correct the mistakes, but you look to build on the positives. One of the huge positives for Montreal last week against Ottawa was the production of their running backs. Antwi and Fletcher combined to average almost eight and a half yards a carry. And it's Fletcher in there now. A good first quarter. Thinking ahead and throwing to Eugene Lewis who stays on his feet. Looked like they had him down and then he spun around and broke that tackle and got a whole lot more inside the Lions 50. Yeah, Eugene Lewis not necessarily known for his the catch skills but does a terrific job on the run here goes full stand back on this one drop in the shoulder spinning off a big hit keeping those legs churning 87 showing some shades of 31 <laughs> they can't wait to get him back I'm sure as well William stand back 101st time targeted this season <laughs> And he was targeted again there, and it falls incomplete with Nafis Lyon 
standing close by, but he was leading the CFL coming into this game in targets. And not too far behind Jalen Acklin in receiving yards overall as well. Yeah, the chase is on. You know, a group of, group of big targets at the top of that list. Eugene Lewis, one of the dominant deep ball receivers. Arguably the most dominant in the Canadian Football League right now. You see the next name on the list in this game as well, and Dominic Rhymes. It was nine receiving touchdowns to lead the way on receivers in the Canadian Football League. as another completion and another first down that one in the hands of Reggie White yeah it's Robin to Gino Lewis is Batman right here Reggie White reading zone coverage finding that soft spot in the midst of about four BC Lions defenders squeezes that one against the thighs for the first down completion and a gain of 18 inside the 29 of BC so Momentum Alouettes in this first half leading by five looking for more Another one, that's Jake Winicky. Goes by the moniker TD Jake. Well, he didn't give that to himself We all did for what he's done the previous two seasons finally got his first touchdown last week against the Ottawa Red Blacks Now you're just gonna see Winicky push up field No one in front of him sits it down quick hitter Trevor Harris just taking what the defense gives him. Easy completion there to move the sticks again. From the BC 18, Alouette's on the move again. Faking the handoff to Antwi, but the whistle blows with the snap of the ball. Procedure, Montreal, number 53. Five-yard penalty remains first down. The left guard, Philippe Gagnon, is called for procedure. So first down, now 15 yards away as they push them back. Trevor Harris, by the way, has six completions to six different receivers so far in this game. They've had a deep group here in Montreal for the last few years. Once again, both backs, Antwi and Fletcher, are in. Setting up the screen to Antwi. Hit there by Jordan Williams and Manny Rugamba. Taken down inside the 20, but so some of the yardage is back. It'll still be a second and long. And you'll see Harris here drawing in the BC Lions defensive line as he looks to set up the screen. The line is going to... Give them a little bit of resistance, but let them get upfield. Allowing Antwi to sneak out. So that screen pass. So make that seven different receivers in seven completions <laughs> now, Dwayne, for Trevor Harris. So he's working that ball around. A second and eight now, though. One receiver, his favorite target, and Eugene Lewis, but a flag is down after that catch. A late flag. Yeah, just when it looked like Trevor Harris might be in a little bit of trouble. It's Gino to the rescue. 87 coming across the middle. Trevor able to sort of rise above the rush to find him here. The flag came out late on the play. There is no penalty on the play. This will be third down. So Dave Foxcroft waving that one off. Ben Vladek and taking down Lewis with Luchez Purifoy coming in to, to finish things off. But the, the Lewis catch. They thought initially there might have been contact to the head, but they picked it up because there was not contact specifically to the head. Inside the 10, a third and one at the BC 9. So short yardage, Dominic Davis. It's been busy so far as a backup quarterback in this game with these short yardage situations. 
He has the Alouette touchdown in this game. And pushing right and pushing a little bit more. It looks like he indeed has a first down, which will be first and goal. A little shove after the fact there. As Davis fired up, leaving the scrum. And seems awfully frustrated with the way he was treated after getting that first down by the looks of things, Dwayne. Yeah, I think he's <laughs> feeling his helmet get wrestled off there. It's like Matthew, Matthew Betts. Had him in a headlock. Matthew Betts, who's returned home to Montreal, actually played his college ball where he started in Quebec City at Laval, but it was a very good start to his CFL career as well. First and goal to BC7. Walter Fletcher, nothing doing, although he manages to push the pile a little bit and get it inside the five. It'll be a second and goal, Montreal. Yeah, Fletcher, not the biggest guy, but. Solid second effort here to keep this play moving in the right direction. Looked like he was going to be stuffed right at the line of scrimmage, maybe even for a loss. But as you said, managed to pick up a couple. Jordan Williams, the CFL Rookie of the Year in 2021. One of the Lions linebackers. So second and goal, BC4, Trevor Harris. The Owls look to open up their lead. With time and time. Oh, it was in and out of the hands of Reggie White. That close to a Montreal touchdown. Instead, we have a third and goal, and the kicking team is coming on. Yeah, keep an eye here on White. He works towards the post, but watch the throw from Trevor Harris. Sort of drops it nicely into the window. Good placement there. Between the halfback sales and free safety, Luchez Purifoy. But White unable to come up with it. So it'll bring on David Cote. The hero a couple of weeks ago with a 48 yard field goal to win it over Hamilton in the last play of the game. Cote, another product of the Val with Zima putting it down. Short field goal up and through. And now it is an eight point lead. That close to being more the one white should have had for a touchdown instead. Montreal puts on three more. Back here in Montreal, Vernon Adams Lions falling further behind. Here's a look at what Adams did as a member of the Montreal Alouettes. Yeah, you particularly look back at that 2019 season, which it was kind of a high point for Vernon Adams in Montreal, a season in which he established himself as one of the Canadian Football League's most electric performers. I think reaching the heights that were expected for him when he first came into the league back in 16. He swings it up to Keon Hatcher, who fumbles the ball, and Montreal has it. Tyrese Bevret gets it in his hands. Adams completing that short one to Hatcher, running upfield. It's that kind of night so far. For the Lions and for the Owls. Turnover for Montreal. And an eight-point lead. Looking for more. A big turnover here created by the Montreal Alouettes. Defense, little bubble screen to Keon Hatcher. Nice lane to get upfield, but pursuit from the interior. From Micah Awe, we know he's a hitter and he delivers a blow here. As well as that secondary support, they pop it loose. Tyrese Beverett who's taken over that weak side linebacker spot. Comes up with the recovery around midfield. Third time. The Montreal starting in BC territory in this game. BC number 33. Five yard penalty remains first down. The strong side linebacker, Benny Regamba called on the offside. And to the Robertsons, too. Love y'all. Love y'all. By the way, talk about switching teams. Mike always started his season with the Lions. Yes. Or they let him go. Had a couple of stints with BC. What 
now up against them in a big play to force a fumble. First and five at the BC 44 after the offside. On the ground, Walter Fletcher. Left side, Boom Guachem has him wrapped up. Gain of two. And a second and three coming up here for Montreal. Yeah, Fletcher getting a little bigger share of the the carries, at least in the early going here. This week, last week, he, he and Antwi combining for 14 carries. Fletcher with nine, Antwi with five in that ball game. Trevor Harris had a shotgun into the hands of Fletcher. Has some burst after first contact to get it inside the BC 40 and close to that first down. He needed three yards. It looks like it'll be very close to that. He thinks it's enough. It is enough. Well, you look at the Alou Alouettes operating with pretty good ball control offense as they mix in this this run game a little bit operating at a decent level of efficiency here and bc just struggling to get things going offensively it'll be interesting to see you know particularly with montreal running the ball a little bit if they can physically wear out and tired out play action this much this out oh, bc for tyson philpot off the play fake gary peters there with them and it falls incomplete second down coming up but to your point, field position has been just about all Montreal's way so far in this game. Uh, it certainly has. Get another look here at Tyson Philpot already with a catch in this football game. You know, go back to draft day. I think a lot of people anticipated that the BC Lions might go receiver and take one of the Philpot twins. A couple of West Coast guys, but they knew they were only playing one Canadian receiver, Javon Katoy was there they needed help at D-line Nathan Cherry is the guy he starts to win. And up front and flags can out David Menard the ex Alouette in there and lots of pressure in on Trevor Harris but a flag does come out major foul face mask BC number 20 it's a 15 yard penalty automatic first down the Will linebacker Bo Combo is a flag for that. So, yeah, BC's rough night continues. Now watch for Combo coming late on this one. Now as Jake Winnicky sort of stepped up to block him, Combo reaches. Hand pops up, and you see a little bit of frustration there for the DC Ryan Phillips. So negating a sack. And pushing Montreal closer inside the 25. First and 10. Leading by eight. Looking for more. And Nathan Cherry nearly had Trevor Harris. And Harris throws it away. You talked about that rookie from the University of Saskatchewan. And getting the start at defensive tackle. Tonight and getting some pressure nearly getting to Trevor Harris. And. Nathan Cherry is a guy, for me, leading up to the draft. His film was absolutely some of my favorite to watch. I mean, this is a guy that if if you don't like the way he plays, you don't like football. Great feet, good hands, very high motor guy. Just a terrific football player is going to have a bright career in this league. Three-man front for BC. Harris steps up, finds a receiver. It's Reggie White. And a first down again. Just outside the 10, getting down to about the 12-yard line they mark it. A nice bounce back play here for the Montreal Alouettes. Trevor Harris steps up, zips that one in. And starting in good field position, the Alouettes have made their fourth straight trip to the red zone. First and 10 from the Lions 12. Harris looking into the end zone. Touchdown. Montreal. Who else? Their leading receiver, Eugene Lewis. The coverage was there. Lewis got the ball. And the Alouettes 
have increased their lead. Well, the thing that stood out to me as I watched this play unfold was that Geno Lewis is covered. He's completely covered all the way. But with Geno Lewis, that really is not a deterrent. Trevor Harris knows that he throws the ball that way anyway. You know, there is no such thing as a 50-50 ball in Geno's world. He's always got an advantage. Delvin Bro was right there on him. Had him covered like a blanket, but there was a hole in the blanket, I guess. And Lewis, as he's often done, is able to make those difficult catches. And with David Cote attempting the point after, we may now have a 15-point lead. 18 to 3. Montreal. BC marched down at a field goal to open the game, but all Alouettes since then. Courtesy in part, that man. Touchdown, Lewis. Gino Lewis, another touchdown for 87 Montreal, his fifth on the season. And here's how the latest one happened. Yeah, keep an eye on the matchup at the bottom of the screen. This is a couple of guys who kind of know what they're doing. Eugene Lewis and Delvin Bro going to work. Bro is right there, hip pocket, nice back shoulder throw from Trevor Harris. Gino Lewis, king of the contested catch. Sort of bodies him out, uses those long arms to reach for that football. And that's another touchdown grab to his season talent. Last three Montreal possessions, touchdown, field goal, touchdown, 18 to 3. Terry Williams has it. And a good return to get it up to the 45. Season getting started in the National Football League last night with the Buffalo Bills impressively beating the Rams, the defending Super Bowl champions. From the 45 now, James Butler for the Lions and a good tackle there. Wesley Sutton got a couple of good standout defensive plays in this ball game and it'll set up a second and long for bc and you know i love the story that wesley sutton right in behind the goalpost has become for the montreal alouettes defensively you know some people may remember a game early in the season against edmonton he had struggled a little bit dealing with kenny lawler and drew some pass interference calls in that game that accounted for big yardage but as a defensive back one thing you gotta have is a short memory he's learned a lot threw it right through coverage intended for Dominic Rhymes. Mike Awe had a shot at it it falls incomplete well, Adams continues at quarterback for BC his first game just coming over last week from Montreal yeah, Adam's still trying to find some traction here with this BC Lions offense. Obviously a tough spot for both he and Antonio Pipkin. Limited reps in this offense for Adams for obvious reasons, but Pipkin, you know, spending the first part of the season as the number three quarterback prepping. And they run a fake to David Mackey, and it doesn't work. They turn it over on downs. BC had gone three and out five straight times and they decided to take a chance on that third down and long but it blew up so 304 on the clock until halftime and the Alouettes will start yet another possession across midfield in the Lions territory after that turnover on down yeah they're gonna try and slip Mackey one of the deep backs here out into the flat Alouettes with a nice job covering it up. The average start for Montreal has been at BC's 49. What a difference in field position. Play fake to Fletcher, completing it to White. Dances around the defender. Got by Delvin Bro and gets enough for a first down. Montreal, the Alouettes just keep on coming. It was 3-0 BC at one point. All Montreal looking to add more before halftime. <laughs> Captain Obvious, David Sanchez, <laughs> just told me that BC's defense has been on the field a long time. Let's see, yeah. time of possession so far, 17-24 for the Montreal Alouettes. Thanks, Chess. Thanks for the football. I got you, KB. Nate, appreciate you. I, you. I don't know what you two are talking about, but that's a great <laughs> combo at halftime. <laughs> uh.
Kate in the panel, including Captain Obvious coming up. <laughs> Less than three minutes away. She's tough on chess. She hey. is. Heather Harris takes off. Let's have another look at that fake punt. Stephen Flintoff to David Mackey. Yeah, David Mackey is the deep back on the left side of your screen. They're going to try and get him out into the flat here. You remember earlier in the game, we saw Zach Lindley, 18, take an inside rush on a punt, and I think that's what BC is trying to take advantage of, is that basically if there's nobody kind of rushing from the outside to contain that and force the kick, that you may have an opportunity to run the fake and slip your deep back out of there. This time, the Alouettes kind of play it safe given the field position. They were ready for the fake. Weren't well you going to say is one Western guy stopping another Western guy? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know how that's really going to go over, but <laughs> you know, really we're all focused on uh, Western playing your alma mater tomorrow. Okay, friend. well. Queens Western tomorrow. Queens Western tomorrow. Go. We've got Laval Montreal tomorrow. Great weekend in uh, in U Sports oh, Ball. College football rivalries. So third down, Dominic Davis. This is busy short yardage night continues. Just not quite enough on that Antwi run, so late in the half, two minutes on the clock, Davis. Right side, not as much this time, but he didn't need much. Here's to have the first down, and he is still upset at the way he's being treated. The hits to the head, complaining to David Menard there, too. So Bola combo over the top. Now you see the arms coming over the top, and again, kind of a headlock on the Alouette's quarterback. Last time we saw it, it was Matthew Batch, C. Luches, Purifoy in there, and Lacombo with his arm in. And Davis is frustrated, but he does get the first down. Harris comes back in. The chance for Montreal to add to their lead. They have it at the 21 of the Lions. Dominant play by Montreal in this first half. Faking the handoff as Harris gets away. Inside the 15, the Alouettes get with Tyson Philpot taking that little dump pass from Trevor Harris. And the Trevor Harris, I think here on this Molson Stadium field, is channeling a little 2019 Vernon Adams with the elusiveness and the unorthodox delivery here. Nice job by Trev making something happen. How's this for a disparity in offense? First downs in the second quarter. By Montreal, 10. By BC, none. Harris was looking for dominance. He's been getting it. Walter Fletcher keeps pushing. Needed three. Get down to about the 11. It is a first down. So we won't see Dominic Davis come in this time. Now Walter Fletcher. Getting it done. He's got some fight after contact, doesn't he? Well, he sure does. Yeah, not the not the biggest guy. But running hard these last couple of weeks for sure. Fletcher. Last school he was at was Ball State. Before that, Edinburgh College, the same college Trevor Harris once went to. What is that? The BC 11. Fletcher again. Right side, finds a hole inside the five. The second down is coming up under a minute to play until halftime. Yeah, I like this path taken by Walter Fletcher. Kind of press the outside, force him to play contain. Defenders overplay, fighting to the outside, respecting his speed. He cuts it up north-south towards the inside. So call it a second and three from the BC4. 45 seconds to the end of a half that has been dominated by Montreal ever since BC scored the first points. Harris under pressure and taken down by X Alouette. David Menard 
had a great year with Montreal last year with eight sacks in the shortened season. And this time he gets a sack of the Alouette quarterback. Yeah, if Trevor Harris could get his head to the right in a hurry here as running back Jeshurun Antwi, you'd think would be one of his one of his hot reads here wide open in that flat, but Menard in on him so quickly. There's just no opportunity to get to that. David Menard started his career with the BC Lions after playing for the Montreal Caramaz in his eighth season. And then he signed on with the Alouettes for a season before going back to BC. So Cote comes in. He's one for one. Made it from 13 a little further back. This one, but a 21 yard try. Just seconds to go until halftime. Three more on the board for the Montreal Alouettes. 21 to 3, 21 unanswered points. With halftime coming up, Kate Burness, Milt Stiegel, Dave Naylor, and are we going to call Davis Sanchez Captain Obvious now? Well, I'm, I got to tell you, I'm a little concerned. Obviously, we saw the panel in person on Monday in Hamilton. And I think we have a bit of a bullying problem. I think that, I think Kate's too hard on Chess. It, it just caters everybody. Well, I think Milt, it's mostly I think, Kate. I think Milt kind of gangs up on Chess too, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I'll keep an eye on that. It's not okay. <laughs> and we'll see the panel again on site very soon too. See how they address that and more. We got a lot to talk about here. The good for Marc Antoine Dupois' Alouettes and the bad for the BC Lions. We've seen some Antonio Pipkin at the beginning and then after three possessions, Vernon Adams against his old team ever since. Yeah, Pipkin checking back in for this one, tries to find Dominic Grimes over the middle, but Marc Antoine Dupois continuing his strong play at free safety here in his second season. So, so Pipkin to Adams, back to Pipkin. Keon Hatcher has it in his hands, but the clock has nothing but zeros. So while they pitched it deep enough to get into field goal position, they are out of time. Great half by the Montreal Alouettes. Vernon Adams, Antonio Pipkin and company, some work to do. Down by 18 points. All right, let's go back to Kate Burness and the panel in studio. Pulling and cheating. Not hard to do. <laughs> and alongside Milt Siegel, Dave Naylor, my absolute favorite analyst that I am so lucky to work with each and every weekend. It is the one and only nice. Davis Sanchez. Nice. Wow. I I I honestly I can't even tell you how much I appreciate you. Yeah, it's absolutely mutual. I don't even it. know what Rod and right Dwayne here. are speaking about in Montreal <laughs> this fine evening. All right, let's talk a little football right now. And it is a beat down courtesy of the Montreal Alouettes. And one of the reasons is just because the offense of the BC Lions cannot get it going. And it's really too sad, Milt, because this was an offense we just loved what? watching. It was arguably one of the most dynamic in the CFL, if not the most fun to watch. And then you had Antonio Pickin, who is 2 of 7. He's got 21 yards. They put him back at the end of the half. Right. But they just can't get anything going. Yeah, and I won't mention the guy they're missing. I'm no, sure BC Lions fans don't want to hear that name right now because he can't help him out. But this team offensively, and it hurts them defensively. I mean, they're in a heap of trouble because of their quarterback situation. And this play right here, let me know what's the problem. One of the problems with uh, Pipkin, his pocket presence. He has to understand where he is on the field. You're backed up in the end zone. You have no time. You can't get up in the pocket. You need to get rid of the ball because what do you do now? Your team takes a safety. You have to punt the ball, creates better field position for the opposing team. So after that, they decided to put Vernon Adams in. It's not much success. Uh, and I know he's not up to speed on his offense right now, but Vernon Adams is a veteran in this league, and I expected more out of him. I think they'll give him more of an opportunity in the second half to see what he can do. But right now, if you see what this team has as far as quarterbacks go, they're going to struggle, and you know what? A byproduct of that is that defense is going to struggle right now. But because for that, they had a number one offense the and a number punt, one defense. The fake punt told you how, how much desperate. they, yeah, desperate, <laughs> desperate they are right now. <laughs>
Well, and of course, the guy who replaced Vernon Adams as the quarterback of the Montreal Alouettes is Trevor Harris, and he's having a pretty good night. And he's got his favorite target, Geno Lewis, going pretty well. And one of the things about Geno Lewis, he comes into this game as the second leading receiver in the CFL. We think of him as the deep threat, right? The guy who gets behind everybody. But you know what? He can tough out the yards as well. He's carrying three, bounces off, gets back into in, upfield a little more to give them better field position. This one, this looked like this was going to be a field goal situation. Look what he's, he drags the pile again towards, they end up getting a first down into that, another field goal. And then later, Trevor Harris sees him in a one on one matchup with Delvin Bro. Easy. Geno Lewis, touchdown. He's the man for the Montreal I, I, don't, I don't know what they're doing right now. I believe Luchez Pierre for Look at him out there. He's probably got the fullback, but he's up there at the line of scrimmage. No help. No help. If you want to help out Delvin Bro right there, if he just backs up and plays mm. from depth, he can play outside that tight end, outside the fullback at like 10, 10 yards. He can give body position to Bro. Bro can now play outside leverage, knowing mm. he has help and take right. that fade away. Right. And right. then Luches can add late to the run fit or else to the tight end, whoever he has. And instead, so, Trevor's eyes get really big he when he sees a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Tell him, like, a little insight to what we're doing in the, in the, in the back here watching the game is we saw that right away. I yelled right out, away. Del Delvin right Brown, right, one one-on-one with mm -hmm. Eugene down there. It was so obviously wide open, but things like that, just body position, simple things are, uh, you know, a big part of the game. Yeah, well, we'll see what Montreal Alouettes can do in the second half and see what adjustments the BC Lions can make. Uh, meanwhile, 21-3 coming up after the break, our Farhan Lalji stops by with a special one-on-one. -on -one. We've got that coming up next. Chandler Worthy, big return going here as Worthy gets inside the BC Lions 35. Eugene Lewis who throws off it into the end zone but picked off and then coughed up. He's taken down. Some ex-teammates making it hard for him. He swings it up to Keon Hatcher who fumbles the ball and Montreal has it. Harris looking into the end zone. Triple enter. We're going to see a lot of each other tomorrow. All right. Woo! That means two meals, by the way, Milt Siegel. It all depends on what's being served. All if I don't right. eat, no one eats. All right. Argos, Red Blacks, <laughs> Rough Riders, Blue Bombers, Stampeders taking on the Alex. It all kicks off 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Meanwhile, as promised, here's our Farhan Lalji with Nathan Roaring. So first, I'd probably get in trouble if I didn't ask you how you're feeling. Well, can you tell us uh, a week after surgery? Yeah, feeling good. Feeling good, uh, getting better every single day, and uh, looking forward to, uh, to getting back out there. What's next in your recovery process? Uh, seeing the doctor, and, and he'll tell, tell me where I'm at, and uh, we'll go from there. How tough has it been to watch? It's tough, yeah. I want to ask you about another guy you have to watch, and that's your brother Curtis. And um, first of all, let's talk a bit about his last performance, 345 yards, four touchdowns, uh, pretty impressive debut. Yeah, and one on the ground, so it was, it was really good to see him do a whole bunch of different things, and uh, it was great to see the, the team as a whole uh, click uh, after a tough season last year. So uh, it was a really fun game to watch, and, and hopefully it continues uh, this week. What is it about Curtis that makes you believe he can handle that stage? Yeah, I think he's just a, a kid that's always uh, been very comfortable uh, out there on the football field. He's always been... Uh, kind of a, a guy that's been even keel and, and not let the emotions get the, the best of him. And um, he's also a, a fierce competitor, but I think he's a guy that when other guys look at him, uh, they see a, a calmness, they see someone who's got it together, and I think that's what you, you want from a leader. How much do you think he's inspired by the first half of the season you authored here in the CFL and the success that you had? Uh, I, I think it's I think it's cool for him to watch. I think obviously he's pretty competitive. We're pretty competitive. I think he probably wants to put up those type of numbers and feels that he has an advantage now that I'm off the field. So um, I think he I think he's he's not looking at it too closely. But I know that uh, he's he's going to continue to to grow and develop and put up uh, those type of numbers. I, I have no doubt. Is there a rivalry between the two of you? Of course. Yeah, we're brothers. So so what's the bet? <laughs> Oh, there's no bet. Oh, we just we just get competitive, and he'll. Um, I mean, it's it's tough. If I had played a couple more games, played a 12-game season, maybe it would have been a little bit easier to compare. Uh, but uh, I, you know, even with the games I played last year, we were getting competitive about stats and all that stuff. So, uh, just as brothers do. Well, speaking of little brother Curtis Rohr, you can see him play Penn State Saturday. It all goes down noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time. But meanwhile, we still have this game to conclude. Montreal with a dominating first half. Our John Lewis standing by with Gino Lewis right after this.
Welcome Shania Twain to the broadcast. <laughs> Jez, give us some stats. We said on law that this BC Lions defense is going to have to play big. Their offense is going to take time to get going, but who would have thunk 1251 to two minutes time of possession in the second quarter? They got to move the ball, not only to score some points, but also just get that defense off the field to rest. As promised, our John Liu, standing by with Gino Lewis. Gino, you talked a lot this week about better execution and consistency. What was behind the improved qualities in those areas in that first half for your offense? Um, I think just coming coming out in the game with a sense of urgency. Uh, we understand, you know, the circumstances that we're in right now. Uh, we understand that BC circumstances, so we got to come out here, man, be disciplined, execute our plays, and the sky's the limit for us. Would you say that Chandler Worthy is truly past his injury issues? That 51-yard kick return that set up really good field position for you for two sequences in the first quarter. Yeah, hey, uh, Worthy's a hell of a player, man. Um, every time he gets it on the special team, it's a chance that he could take it every time. So uh, it's exciting to watch him go out there and do what he's doing. Uh, you know, offensively, defensively, and special teams-wise, uh, we clicking right now. We just got to keep this going in the second half. Hey, thanks for this, Gino. All right, thanks a lot, yeah. Hey, this is worse than Hamilton's guys last week. All right, currently an 18-point lead for Gino Lewis and company. We'll get you back to Percival Molson Stadium for second-half action right after this. Time on this Friday night in Montreal, and it's mostly Alouettes, a 21 to 3 lead. Here's John Liu with Lions head coach Rick Campbell. Rick, what was your assessment of your quarterback, uh, quarterback play in that first half? Well, we got a lot of people that can do better, coaches and players, me included, that we're not helping ourselves out. So uh, we got to get the whole football team going, playing better offense, defense, and special teams, and then we'll get the quarterback thing going too. Considering how long Vernon Adams was out of action and then coming up with only one week's practice, learning a new play package, uh, how did you feel he responded to the task in front of him? Well, we, we, we want to put him in a good position, and we thought that he was comfortable enough to do it. And we're going to keep going the second half and keep working at this thing. And like I said, it's a whole football team issue, not a quarterback issue. Thanks for this, Rick. Thanks. Chandler Worthy standing back, along with Darius Pickett for the Alouette return. Stefan Flintoff to get it underway. Alouette football, Alouette lead to start this second half. At Molson Stadium, Chandler Worthy had a big return in the first half. Has one going there to... Given Montreal another good place to start. They've enjoyed great field position just about the entire game for a turn of 24. A solid opening 30 minutes for Alouette's quarterback. Trevor Harris started the game with seven consecutive completions to seven different receivers. Spreading it around, we saw Trevor with a few nice plays off script and you know, what would a half a football be for the Alouette's offense without a contested catch by Geno Lewis? They had five straight trips to the red zone to end the first half. Flag <laughs> comes out afterwards. Geno Lewis had enough for the first down pending this flag. And we'll see if Geno gets called. For the push off. That's what I was wondering. Offensive pass interference. Montreal, number 87. It's a 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. And you can see him create some space for himself to catch that football. Yeah, solo matchup here on the outside. Lewis, obviously, and knowing he's going to get the throw behind, he wants to push downfield. Working against Gary Peters. Yeah, I think the end result actually looked worse than the actual push, right. just as, you know, Peter's momentum carried him a bit and he stumbled, but there was definitely a, a push there that helped him along a little bit. And there is an injured Lions player down on the field. Yeah, watch here. Boom, watch him on the pass rush. 
You've got Pierre Olivier and Lestage coming out of the backfield, motioning from the backfield. You know, that quick protection. They're trying to get people's hands down, cut at the line of scrimmage. He gets watch him right around the knee. Lestage just recently being let go by the Seattle Seahawks joining the Alouettes. Boom, watch him. In his second year at Oregon State and having a very solid year for BC. Really improving a lot. Five sacks coming into this game. Getting off with a bit of a limp under his own steam. Yeah, Lions. Watchroom was a guy who really started to figure it out, I thought, partway through last year. The, the world of pass rushing and the Canadian Football League, obviously a little different. Had a great chat actually this week with the Argos Shane Ray, who talked about making that adjustment to to being a yard off the ball and how as a defensive lineman it changes your timing a little bit in terms of footwork and, and hand placement and so on. First and 20 with the penalty against Lewis. Offensive pass interference. Walter Fletcher in the draw and another penalty flag is out as Josh Banks takes him down. Holding Montreal number 53. It's a 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. So the Alouettes are moving backwards right now. This one's going to go against the left guard. Philippe Gagnon. Gagnon, a guy in his second tour of duty here in Montreal originally. So that sets up the old first and 30. <laughs> what do you got in your playbook here? You got a couple of downs to get it. Harris. Well, this is trouble. He does get rid of it barely. Can Julian Grant with Ben Laddick covering him? It goes incomplete. Now you got a second and 30 coming up from the Alouette 22. Jordan Williams, last year's rookie of the year, coming in and getting to Harris just as he gets rid of the football. So they will have to punt, but they get a little bit further upfield before they do. And we anticipate something that we've hardly seen in this game, and that is the BC Lions with decent field position. Good job, good job. Depending on the return for Terry Williams, who was added for just situations like this when they really need a good return. That was the first two and out of the night for the Montreal Alouettes. So that part of the half starts better for BC defensively. Special teams. Good coverage Montreal. Williams is going nowhere. He gets up to about the 31. Good coverage Alouettes. Antonio Pipkin gave way to Vernon Adams for a while in the first half. Pipkin starts the second half. 21-3 Montreal. Back here in Montreal, former Alouette quarterback Antonio Pipkin former Alouette quarterback Vernon Adams Adams on the sidelines Pipkin is in we've seen both of them on this night they're in a big hole taking the Butler on the move gets away from Usher and he is finally taken down as Darius Pickett comes in after a gain of six yards by Pipkin well, for much of the first half Pipkin held the BC Lions best offensive play as he opened with a nice run. And things broke down behind the line of scrimmage. Lions two best offensive plays ended up being their first and last plays of the first half as Pipkin came back on to complete a long one down the sidelines to Keon Hatcher as time ran out. You know, they're just hoping the stuff in between beginning and end here in the second half goes a little better than it did in the first. Let's see on second and four Pipkin quickly off to the left. Completes it. Javon Katoy up near 
the 40. He had to get closer to the 41, a pickup of three. Third down now. The Lions have already gone for it on a fake on a third down in the first half, and that failed. That was for much longer yardage. See what they do here down 18 points with a third and short coming up. Kachoy work into the flat. But you get a good look at the speed of Marc Antoine de Croix from his free safety spot. Reads what's coming, comes from the middle of the field, taking perfect angle. A nice tackle against the big guy. Pepkin right side and more easily enough for the first down. So the drive continues. Shy of the 45 for the BC Lions. And talk about the quarterback situation. Something that Pipkin and Adams could relate to with Montreal in 2018. But here's, here's what he did in short yardage. And, you know, looking at... Obviously, the things that Nathan Rourke did, not just throwing the ball, but also running the football. You know, I I think that with guys like Antonio Pipkin, Vernon Adams, there may be a bit of a chance to, to even expand that run package, quarterback run package more to play to their strengths. Play action fake, gets rid of it and completes it. Another first down, Dominic Rhymes with a catch, and Pipkin is down. Hit just as he threw the football. As Adams gets ready to go back into this game. Yeah, it seemed like as Pipkin was just finding his groove. Hopefully he's all right. Mike Moore coming from the defensive right side. Quick swim there. He supplies the first pressure, but it's Nick Usher with the kill shot coming up the middle. But nonetheless, Pipkin stands in. Finds Dominic Rhymes downfield for a big completion. And the first completion to Rhymes in this game. One of their top receivers, one of the top receivers in the CFL has had a quiet night. BC, Montreal Territory inside their 50. Butler. And some good yardage there down closer to the Montreal 40. Gain of nine for the Lions. We saw Pipkin looking like he's still gathering himself a little bit after that Nick Usher hit. Regardless, keeps that ball moving in the right direction. Second and one. Pipkin again. And... Very close to another Lions first down. I mentioned 2018. Yes, the sticks move for first down. In 2018, the Alouettes' first starting quarterback was Drew Willie. Then they went to Jeff Matthews. They would later go to and acquire Johnny Manziel. Vernon Adams would come back from Hamilton. They had Antonio Pipkin. They had Matthew Schiltz. They had six different quarterbacks. And really a, a, a turbulent season for both Pipkin and Adams to be sure. And then as mentioned, they were the top two in 2019. Pipkin got hurt. Adams came in and became the established starter for the Owls. Pipkin now first down, completes another one. Lucky Whitehead down around the 30. Well, if we know one thing about quarterbacks in this league is that the, the general rule is that it takes time for guys to develop, you know, and it's not... A lot of other, like a lot of other positions where you'd say sort of, you know, two years and you typically have guys ready to play at a high level. Occasionally, you get a Nathan Rourke in his second year who catches fire, but I mean, typically for quarterbacks, it's a long, slow curve to becoming really solid starters in this league. More impressive offense in the second half for the Lions who keep it going. Another catch by Rhymes. For another BC first down. Oh, nice job there off the play action. Getting Pipkin out on the edge. Threatening. Oh, lucky Whitehead. May have had a shot on the deeper route. Working to that same side. Down to the 15, first trip to the red zone for the BC Lions on this night. 
most impressive drive by far they've had in this game. Pipkin steps away, looks into the end zone, and throws it out. Dominic Rhymes the closest there. Marc Antoine Duquois, the safety, holding his right knee. What a concerning sight for a young man who's had such a, a strong season at safety for the Montreal Alouettes. Went down in immediate pain. There you see Dequaw coming over to help, and you saw sort of that wobble as he planted his foot. Getting attention now, Marc Antoine Dequaw in his second year out of the Montreal Caravan. A concerning sight there for the Alouettes. Marc Antoine Dequaw has become such an important player. In this Montreal Alouette secondary communicator and playmaker from that free safety position. See a couple of his highlight reel interceptions so far this year, including that pick six against Saskatchewan. Here you see him in coverage. This looked like he sort of jammed his leg when he planted in the turf. Leg wobbled on him a little bit, but saw him get up, make it to the sidelines under his own power. So he is on, but you know who's on with another sack, and a flag comes out further downfield. Mustafa Johnson got the pressure there on Antonio Pickett and takes him down. Second sack for Johnson. And there's 94 Johnson right in the middle of that Montreal defensive line. And again, Missed assignments there, maybe some miscommunication on the left side of that offensive line. So it looked like the left guard, Philip Norman, was supposed to stay on the Alouette's newcomer. But there was a penalty against the Alouettes, moving the ball inside the 10. Illegal contact against Adarius Pickett was the call. So it negates the sack by Mustafa Johnson. And it's a first and goal. Lions looking much different in the second half on offense. Play fake. Pickett for Keon Hatcher. There seemed to be confusion. He turned back. Ball was there in his hip, but he didn't hang on. And it did look like there was a bit of confusion as Pipkin was rolling out and saw Hatcher open. Yeah, just, you know, I mean, this to me is a case of guys not being used to working together as Hatcher was ready for the ball early and then he turned because I think he thought that Pipkin was going to run the ball and he's turning looking upfield for someone to block. He takes a peek back just as the ball is coming but isn't able to react and adjust in time. Missed opportunity. It looked like they had a good shot at the touchdown if Pipkin throws that ball right away. The Lions need a touchdown to get back in this game. Montreal 7, second and goal. Pipkin looks to the end zone. Touchdown. They thought they had a touchdown for Brian Burnham. And they got it. A little discussion afterwards. The Alouettes didn't think it should count. Brian Burnham, a much needed touchdown for BC. Yeah, watch Burnham as he works towards the sideline here. And this one looks like it's going to be in trouble. Raheem Wilson narrowly misses an interception. Now you can see that ball touch the ground. It'll be interesting as this one gets reviewed to see if there's if there's a feeling the previous play is under automatic review by the command center as a potential scoring play that close to being deflected away by Raheem Wilson yeah, I think we got it we got a trap Command center's looking. Is it a touchdown for Brian Burnham? Command center's 
looking at this another time, Dwayne Ford, is this a touchdown? I think this is an incompletion. As much as history has told me to give Brian Burnham the benefit of the doubt, you can see right there that ball pop up by the shoulder and touch the turf. Here's the decision. After review by the command center, the ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. It will be third down. No touchdown, BC. And it's third and goal. And Lions are going to leave their offense out there. Trailing 21 to 3. In this territory, they got, got to make the most of it. Here we go. 13th play of the drive. BC needs the end zone. Instead, Pipkin is taken down. And there is the second sack for Mustafa Johnson. At a far more critical point for Montreal because the Lions once again have turned it over on downs. They look better. They got close, but in the end, the result is the same. No more points on the board for BC. What a day we have coming up tomorrow. Super Saturday on the CFL on TSN with a triple header. It starts with the Argos and Red Blacks. That showdown in Ottawa. Red Blacks trying to keep it rolling now. That'll be followed by the Banjo Bowl, Riders and Bombers in Winnipeg, and the Stampeders and the Elks, the Battle of Alberta rematch after Calgary won it at McMahon. Watch it all. PSN, defensive coordinator Noel Thorpe. He was saying that to the officials that he trapped the ball. No touchdown, and his defense really stood up after that. And Mustafa Johnson continues to demonstrate that he wants to stay in this Montreal Alouettes lineup. 23-year-old Colorado product. Has been kind of a force up front. Staff of Johnson, it's the worst starting position for the Alouettes offense at their 15, but they'll take it because of the turnover on downs. By the way, BC's time of possession on that drive, 804. First seven drives, 952. They almost matched it, but they still didn't get any points. Still down 21 to 3, 18 points, and we're well past the midway point of the third quarter. Manny Rigamba, strong side linebacker for BC. And Rigamba taking over that spot several weeks ago for the Lions out of Miami of Ohio. After Luchez Purifoy went from there back to safety. Second and seven, Montreal 18 after that game by Fletcher. Trevor Harris, left side, Reggie White comes down with it. And a first down across the 25 for Montreal. And Reggie White, another one of those Alouettes. Big bodied receivers, you see him that time. Fighting off the linebacker, Jordan Williams to go up and make that catch along the sideline. Down Montreal. They'll scrimmage right from their 30. Jesh Renantui in and running back again. And Jordan Williams was right there to take him down for a loss. Yeah, we saw the same backfield action and movement from quarterback Trevor Harris in the first half when they set up a screen. You'll see Jordan Williams absolutely recognizes it and wasn't going to be fooled here. He's got the coverage on Antwi, gets in behind that offensive line in a hurry to make that tackle for a loss. And a loss of two yards for Jeshrin Antwi on that play. Second and 12, Montreal 28, four-man rush. Harris gets rid of it, and intercepted Rugamba. But they blow the whistle. BC ball saying he was down after catching that, but a big pick 
for a Lions team that has shown they can move the ball need to start scoring points and their defense has set them up nicely now late in the third quarter yeah keep an eye on David Menard working from the defensive tackle spot here it's a guy who's always been a terrific pass rusher does it there against his former teammate Philippe Gagnon pass intended for Jake Wenicky here sit he tries to bounce it out as the quarterback looks to get on the move but Rugamba cuts underneath close enough is that about a 350 degree rotation closer than I would get <laughs> I guarantee you that yeah you ma yeah he had me by about 200 degrees went to Miami of Ohio you think of anybody else who went there Raheem Wilson was closing in fast on Lucky Whitehead, but gets it in his hands. Former Stampeder Raheem Wilson. Yeah, long throw. Head to that sideline. Now's the defender Wilson to close quickly on that one. Never want to let Lucky Whitehead get ahead of steam after the catch short yardage going out wide is Pitkin. and he does have it and goes right through the signage escorted there by Tyrese Beverett but a first down for BC Again, taking advantage of the athleticism of Pitkin on this play, he's around the corner quickly. Easily with enough of an angle to pick up that first down. The Lions already deep into Montreal territory once in this quarter and came up empty. 18-point ball game. They've got to make the most of this opportunity. The play clock winding down. Of trouble there for Pipkin. Back at the 25, lost yardage. Wesley Sutton coming in. I started to talk about Pipkin earlier in the ball game and what a an impact performer he has become on this Montreal defense. A guy who certainly seems to have thrived since the arrival of Noel Fork as the defensive coordinator. Loss of three, second and 13. And looks like the final play of the third quarter. Some life with the Lions, but they really need to score. Got a chance. Down to the 15. First down, Brian Burnham. Third down now, not enough on the play, getting it down to the 15. Still shy, but what do they do when they're down 18, heading to the final 15? Because that was not a touchdown. You look at the stats through three quarters, there have been signs of life from the BC Lions in terms of moving the ball, but the most important staff is still looking pretty daunting there, Dwayne. Yeah, an uphill battle for them certainly on the scoreboard, and especially if they're not able to take advantage of the opportunities they're given in close once in the, the third quarter. And understandably, I think the right decision, especially given that it hasn't been easy for them to get there, that you're going to try and come away with a major. Instead, they come up empty. But the pressure is on again here as they venture in deep into Alouette's territory faced with the third down situation. Yeah, Vernon got them to the 15. It's a third and four, but again, touchdown or bust. They did this before, and they didn't get it. They turned it over on downs, but down by 18, third and four. They're going for it. Antonio Pipkin. He completes it down at the five. And fighting for more yards. 
yardage as well is Brian Burnham again. First and goal, BC Lions to start this fourth quarter. Uh, if in doubt, go to Brian Burnham. He's going to work kind of towards that corner, but watch as Whitehead comes inside. I think he may have thought for a moment that this ball was intended for him. But Burnham stays focused on the ball, comes up with the grab, and gets a critical Lions first down. Trying to pull Wesley Sutton into the end zone. Got at least another yard out of it, so mark that down near the two. First and goal. Here comes BC. Pipkin. Handing it off to Butler. Cuts back. Taken down hard by Michael Alway. <laughs> Got a yard, but boy, did he pay for it. The hard-hitting middle linebacker, Micah Awe, with the tackle. I mean, this is Micah Awe living up to his reputation. Delivering a big shot here. As for a moment, it looks like Butler's got some daylight. He's starting to accelerate. Micah Awe just says, not so fast. Second and goal. Picking himself, flags out, and a touchdown for the BC Lions. <laughs> But there are flags. Offsides, Montreal number six. That penalty's declined. Touchdown. And for the first time in this game, the Lions indeed have found the end zone. Well, a huge one here. And, you know, a lot of that momentum through field position that Montreal enjoyed in the first half seems to have been taken by BC here in the second half. They're finally able to take advantage of it with their first touchdown of the ball game as Pipkin punches that one in. And Sean White once played for the Montreal Alouettes, kicks it through. Once again, flags do come out. This time, Pipkin and the Lions get a major score. The BC Lions have had the more productive offense in the second half. And they've had to gamble in third down. This one paid off, Wayne. Yeah, big set third down completion to Brian Burnham. Sets the Lions offense up in close. Antonio Pipkin lunges in for BC's first touchdown of the game, cutting this to a two-score margin. Lions carrying some momentum here. There was a penalty, but it didn't matter for the point after. But the Lions do kick off from the 30. 21-10 to score now. Chandler Worthy is back. His 30. The guy comes out there as he's taken down up around the 35. Eugene Lewis. One of the top receivers in the CFL. Yeah, and it's been interesting to, to watch so far tonight. Ray Lewis playing a little bit of quarterback there, gets intercepted. One of the few things that went wrong in the first half for Montreal. We've seen him come up with a couple of big plays since, but interesting to note that a guy who is the best deep ball receiver in the Canadian Football League. Hasn't been targeted anything over 20 yards in this ball game. Closing in on 4,000 career receiving yards. So a penalty starting the Alouettes further back at their 20. Two possessions so far in this half, ending with a punt and an interception. Tyson Philpott on the sweep. Jordan Williams taking him down. You look at reception percentage of the deeper targets, more than 20 yards, and and how Eugene Lewis has really stood out this season. Yeah, well, this this is the thing that's amazing, and uh, you know, I had Marshall Ferguson dig into his stack of numbers this week to take a look at uh, at Eugene Lewis and, and the deep ball. That's quite a stack of numbers, well, by the it, way, that Marshall is, has. It is. Marshall lives surrounded by by stats and game film, but uh, he he is so unique. You see his the completion percentage to him on those throws of 20 plus yards tops in the Canadian Football League 64% for a guy who is one of the most targeted 
receivers on deep balls. And the irony that their completion percentage to him on balls over 20 yards is actually higher than the completion percentage on throws under 20. It's amazing. Putting that 64% of his into perspective, the league-wide average, other than Eugene Lewis, is under 40% on throws of 20 plus. Delvin Bro, the injured defender for BC, is off. And they've got some heat on him. Sione Tuhema with his seventh sack of the season for BC. Yeah, Tehema, a nice addition. Another guy who got off to a fast start. The season opener. Just one of those where he keeps his motor running. So third and eight, Joseph Zima to kick it away. And from deep in the Alouette zone, so we've really seen a flip of field possession here in the second half. Well, once again, BC should be in pretty good shape with this ball. But nowhere to go on that return for Terry Williams. Well, Harden, some friends of Vernon Adams to see him traded away. Certainly Eugene Lewis. More on that friendship. Let's go back to John Lewis. Yeah, well, absolutely, Rod. Eugene Lewis counted Vernon Adams Jr. as his closest friend on the Alouettes through their six seasons together as teammates. And Lewis credits Adams for helping build a culture in Montreal that extended beyond the practice field and the meeting room, specifically the two consecutive off-seasons where where Adams paid for his receivers to fly down and stay in Adams' home state in Washington to help build chemistry and prep for the season. And in addition to that, Lewis says that Adams also inspired some of his American teammates on the Alouettes to learn some French words and phrases, something that's a small gesture, but is very much appreciated by the local fans here when interacting with players in the stadium and around the city. Thank you, John. James Butler with the ball in his hands. And here comes the BC Lions, a first down. This offense really waking up in the second half. That's a gain of 15 more yards. Yeah, and you, you touched on it as the, the Alouettes punted the ball. That it's, it's been a real reversal of fortunes in terms of field position. The Alouettes played with short fields. Average starting position for them in the first half of this ball game was in BC territory. But now that's all turned around, and it's BC's turn. They hope to take advantage. So here we go in a first and ten, reaching in behind and making that catch. Another completion for Antonio Pipkin. Keon Hatcher. And a nice adjustment with the ball in the air for Hatcher. Twisting his body to reach behind and make that grab. Slow his momentum. BC gets it to the 38 of the Alouettes. It's a second down and two. It's an 11 point game now. Two score game. Lions trying to chip away some more. Still lots of time. Nine and a half minutes. Back in the hands of Butler. Puts his hand down on the turf. Is able to get the first down and more. A pickup of five. First down BC. Yeah, Butler popped up. Looking like he wanted a little more, but Got what he needed to reset the sticks. A test for Noel Thorpe in that Alouette's defense. First down, second half. Talk about a reversal of fortune. BC 11 first downs in the second half. Montreal just won. The different game. Lions need more points. but Dupois coming back in this game and Burnham caught it and he coughed it up and Dupois has it. Yeah, bang bang play here as Burnham catches it barely has time to get turned around before Darius Pickett comes from the backside with the hit. Marquette Antoine Dupois with yet another big play 
from his free safety position. And Darius Pickett with the hit that forced the fumble. Montreal ball. Rick Campbell challenge flag remains in his pocket after the fumble by Brian Burnham. Yeah, Burnham's going to come from the left side of the formation, crossing to the right. Middle of the field, he catches the ball. Turns and looks upfield as Darius Pickett comes from the back side and punches that one out as he makes the tackle. Marc-Antoine Decroix with the recovery. So it's Montreal ball and a half that's been dominated in terms of time of possession by the BC Lions in the second half. Walter Fletcher, the ball in his hands. We'll take another look at what happened with Brian Burnham. Very quick possession, but did catch the ball and turned around before popping it up. Yeah. As it puts it to the right arm, turns. And Pickett is right there. He's coming from the backside. Burnham really never had a chance to find, locate Pickett before the hit was made. Second and seven. This guy's a force. Rotating in on that BC Lions impressive defensive line, Sione Tuhema, with his eighth sack of the season, his second of the night. Yeah, they've had Tuhema and Guachim working together a little bit on that side of the defensive line. There you're going to see nice spin move back to the inside. Get into a passing situation, essentially play a defensive end at a defensive tackle spot, working against a, an interior offensive lineman who's typically used to working against a maybe bigger, not quite as quick pass rusher from the defensive tackle spot. Zima gets the punt away. Terry Williams with it in his hands. And he's taken down by Tyrese Beverett up at the Montreal 36 after a punt of 47 yards. He's taken over the BC Lions lead in the sack department, passing Matthew Betts, number two of the night to Hema. It is time for another edition of Friday Night Football Trivia. Going over the 25 years TSN started this Friday Night tradition. Who is the most rushing yards by a BC Lion? Single game rushing yards by a BC Lion in the history of Friday Night Football. Any ideas? You're going to get the answer later on. This is a tough one, though. Antonio Pipkin. been a little bit of a gift but Nafis Lyon earns the six throw is off the mark by Pipkin Lyon goes and gets it but terrific finish in particular to this run as he takes it down the sidelines nice spin move there on the diving quarterback that's a way to settle in with your new team 51 yard return after that pick off Antonio Pipkin. Nafis Lyon just been dealt along with Thomas Costigan to the Alouettes. With Avery Ellis going the other way to Edmonton. Cote, point after, is good. Montreal 28, BC 10. Second interception of the season for Nafis Lyon. He had one earlier for Edmonton off Cody Fajardo a few weeks ago. That's a bigger one. Makes an impression on his new team as well. Yeah, Lions out here on the corner. You're just going to see an overthrow of the intended receiver. The crosser on the inside, Dominic Grimes. 
Lyon makes a nice athletic play to go get that free ball. Into the end zone in style. Alouettes have made a lot of changes in their secondary. And there's a payoff in that latest change, putting the feast lion on the boundary corner. And just when the momentum was swinging the lion's way, it can turn back in a real hurry. Conversation there with Antonio Pipkin. by Alexander Gagne. So I gave you some time to think about it. And I must admit, I was really stumped on this one, provided by our John Pearlberg. There he is. Remember Martel Mallet? Martel Mallet. Martel Mallet, Friday Night History, 213 yards against Montreal. That was at BC Place, September the 4th, 2009, on Friday Night Football on TSN Edition. Martel Mallet, he had time in the NFL. I remember him, too, with Hamilton and Calgary. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that makes you think is we were sort of guessing at this one off air. We see one through a lot of running backs for a stretch there. They did. Lucky right hand. He's hammered there by a lion as the ball was heading into his hand. So there's a new Alouette who's certainly fired up the way things have gone the last minute and a half. Yeah, Lion feeling it right now, and certainly the Alouettes. When you consider they've had to play chunks of this season. The Greg Reed, who's been one of their top DBs the last couple of years, Najee Murray, a productive veteran guy back there as well. You know, losing Money Hunter in free agency, Patrick Levels. And they released Rodney well. Randall, who ended yeah. up going to Hamilton. They're great to add a little bit of depth back there. Second and ten. The intended receiver was Whitehead, trying to thread the needle in there. Falls incomplete. And quickly, BC is facing a two and out. 5.02 on the clock in this fourth quarter. And back to being down by 18 points. A tight window there. For Pipkin and Whitehead. of the United States Open will continue tomorrow with the women's final. The players take to the court in competition for the fourth and final Grand Slam trophy of the year. Oljabur of Tunisia is up against Iga Swiatek, the top seed from Poland. Number one player. Action getting underway at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. The women's final of the U.S. Open only here on TSN. Trevor Harris back on the field now. Less productive second half, but the defense has certainly picked them up with that pick six by Nafis Lyon. Defense standing strong again. Alouettes trying to get back in the win column after a loss here at Molson Stadium to the Ottawa Red Blacks last week. Walter Fletcher with the ball. Walter Fletcher with a game. And a first down for the Alouettes up across the 35. I'd expect to see a steady dose of Walter Fletcher. And Jeshrin Antwi down the stretch here. As Montreal will look to keep that clock running, limit BC's opportunities down the stretch. That was Montreal's second first down of the second half only. Much quieter for an offense that was very productive, taking advantage of good field position in that first half. Look at Walter Fletcher there. First and 10, Montreal 37 now. And the clock is really the enemy of the BC Lions now as they go to the ground as Dwayne Ford suggested they should keep it there kill some clock gain of eight Fletcher trying to grind it out and take a win 
Yeah, still some time obviously left in this ball game, but get a bit, little bit of a feeling even just reading body language that that Nafis Lion pick six was something of a backbreaker for the BC Lions. They had a pick earlier. BC's defense did. Manny Regamba, by the way, I'd mentioned a colleague. Miami of Ohio is referring to one Milton Eugene Stiegel. Went to the same school as Manny Regamba just a little bit earlier. Yeah, in the late 50s, as I recall. <laughs> Hey, well, Milt's younger than me, so you got to watch those age jokes. <laughs> well, you know, ironically, Milt is younger than me, but for years I have heard Milt talk about how old I am and how I played Time with leather, leather helmets. BC. <laughs> Milt is about eight months younger than I am. <laughs> so that's right around the time they went from leather to something a little, a little bit more protective. Well, for the BC Lions, uh, you know, as I say, it's it's it is daunting now, down 18 points, and the newest Lion, Vernon Adams, looking on, who. Got some time in the first half, one for three, 17 yards, but still has to get more familiar with that Lions playbook. Hasn't had a lot of time since heading over there, but yeah, and I think that's part of the thing. You know, as Antonio Pipkin has has had his own struggles in in this football game, you might think that you would see more of Vernon Adams, but I suspect that that head coach Rick Campbell wants to put Adams in a better position to succeed rather than sort of forcing him into to this ball game with limited reps. On the ground again. Under three minutes to go and a first down as Montreal keeps the ball. Three minute warning. Lions offense had moved the ball in the second half and had found the end zone but another look at Lyon intercepting the Lions and taking it for the Montreal touchdown. Under three minutes to go, we're close enough now to declare the Advil dual action play of the game. Dwayne Ford, what do you got? Well, not a huge surprise when you've got Eugene Lewis and Trevor Harris working together. It would be a Gino Lewis contested catch. Battling fellow veteran Delvin Bro there. Lewis boxes out, goes up, makes the play for a big touchdown for the Montreal Alouettes in the first half. BC had gotten to within 11 points in the second half, but the pick six really hurt them. Back to 18 where it stands now and under three minutes to go and the ball's in the hands of the Alouettes who just got a first down from Walter Fletcher. Up near their 50, keeping it on the ground to Jeshren Antwey. Left side. Finally taken out of bounds by Jordan Williams, but they just hang on to this ball and keep moving. Yeah, Antwi, the author of you know, the Alouette's longest running plays this season. As you saw him with the heads up play at the end as he gets to the sidelines, he tries to stay in bounds. Keep that clock going by cutting it back, but written out by Jordan Williams. We talked to him about his early life in Calgary. He was born in Israel, raised in Ghana, but came over his, his formative years in Calgary where he learned the game of football and what a difference it's made in his life and a star with the Calgary Dinos winning a Vanier Cup in 2019 against Danny Machocha's Montreal Caravan. Now finding a place with the Alouettes right out, out of the gate really with the Williams standback injured in Calgary in their opener. And we had a, a long run in that game. 70 yards. Yeah, you see his numbers 446 rushing yards coming into this one. And, you know, talked about the, the Canadian skill players for these Montreal Alouettes early in the game. I had a look. Last year, Montreal's Canadians had 421 combined for 421 combined yards on the year. That's rushing, receiving and all kick returns. Antwi was the leader. Most of his coming in the form of, uh, of rushing yards. He had 222 uh, yards this year. They're up over 2,000 yards already. From the Between Antwi boosting his rushing yards, getting a little more of an opportunity. Kayon Julian Grant seeing the ball a little bit more. Tyson, the Tyson Philpott. Maiala, and Tyson Philpott is the guy leading the way. Chipping in as both receiver and kick returner. A lot of good Canadian talent, young Canadian talent on that Alouette team. 
Ball carriers Walter Fletcher there leads it to a third and one and Danny Machocha sending on the field goal unit. Two for two. And a timeout called by the BC Lions as Cote in to see if he can make it a 21 point lead. There you see the two Alouette turned Lion quarterbacks. Maybe commiserating right now, but I suspect that for both of these guys, as they they get some more reps in this offense, that that things will get better. But right now, the BC Lions reeling a little bit in the absence of their starting quarterback Nathan Rourke. Cote's three for three. Alouettes up the lead at the 31-10. Well, Vernon Adams, an emotional week to be sure, though the disappointment of being pulled. And the injury as well and leaving Montreal, but he does leave some very fond memories of the city and its people. I love it in Montreal, man. It's like a second home almost, you know what I'm saying? And uh, like you said, I love the community, did all the things like that, helped out with the kids at football camps and stuff like that. And um, man, I just want them to remember me as just a guy who loved it here and who embraced it, you know what I'm saying? Because when I first got here, I was kind of like nervous and didn't know how it was going to work out. But I think I really embraced the culture here and I appreciate it and respect it. And I can remember two weeks ago when Cote had the winning field goal against Hamilton on the last play. One of the sights was that of Vernon Adams not dressed for that game on to celebrate and uh, and share the joy with his teammates. Yeah, definitely a guy who grew into a team leader here in Montreal. And, you know, you think about kind of a tumultuous start to his career, really a guy who came with huge expectations. You know, we said off the top, acquired, his rights acquired for a first-round pick from B.C. And things didn't work out. Traded to Saskatchewan, then on to Hamilton, released by the Tiger Cats. You know, at a point where he kind of got bumped and was taking reps as a receiver. Found his way back to Montreal. They gave him another opportunity. Spent some time as a backup before eventually winning the starting job again here in 2019 and had a monster year. Passing for nearly 4,000 yards. Went 10 and 5 that season as a starter. But for the BC Lions, second game without Nathan Rourke, and you can see it is a very different offense overall, missing their star quarterback at this point. Pipkin in. Say they have it. They do. Thomas Costigan, another ex Edmonton Elk, just came over with the Feast Lion. He gets his moment late in this game. Uh, Costigan, nice addition to this defensive line rotation from Montreal. As he said, joining the Feast Lion and making a contribution here with the forced fumble. Here he just gets underneath the tackle, Kent Perkins, and drives him back into the quarterback before slapping the ball out. Story time after the turnover. Thomas Costigan enjoying that moment. Jesh Renantwi. The ball in his hands. As the clock is winding down there, 134 on it. Costigan in his second year in the CFL. Been with the Elks as mentioned and just dealt. Quite a connection between Edmonton and Montreal that seems endless with players who have been on both teams. Danny Machocha, Noel Thorpe. Noel Thorpe 
was with Edmonton last year. Machoche, of course, once coached Edmonton for Grey Cups. And the connection continued by the acquisition of Defeast Lion and Thomas Costigan. Both of their names being called tonight. Second and ten. BC 30 to the right side. He keeps driving. Off the turnover. Gain of nine. And so the Alouettes, who could probably feel some heat from the Ottawa Red Blacks after Ottawa beat them last week to close within two points. A little breathing room from them with Ottawa taking on the Toronto Argonauts tomorrow. The TD place. Triple header coming up tomorrow. Three games starting with that one. I know you'll be there. I'm heading off to Edmonton for the rematch between the Elks and the Stampeders and in between the Banjo Bowl as the Riders and Bombers meet again. IG Field in Winnipeg. You're going to Edmonton? I'm going to Edmonton. I'm going to Ottawa. You are. Hmm. How'd that happen? I don't know. <laughs> I hear you have it in your contract that you will only work with me once a week. No more. <laughs> did, did somebody leak that information? They broke it to me gently. Well, you're, with, you're with Marshall tomorrow? With my friend Matt Dunnigan in Edmonton. So looking forward to that game in Alberta. You are in Ottawa and it's uh, Dustin Nielsen and Glenn Suter will be in Winnipeg. We got it all covered and here's the East Division now. Uh, Montreal with the win five and seven now so even if the Red Blacks can beat the Argos which I'm sure the Alouettes at this point wouldn't mind to keep Toronto reeled in. And they could make things really tight in that East Division again the way it's been but a good response by the Alouettes tonight as they beat a team from the West Division for the third time they beat the Riders they beat the Bombers in Winnipeg and they now beat the BC Lions Rick Campbell with the headset off now 22 seconds to go BC 11 and 1 or excuse me Winnipeg 11 and 1 the Lions back to back losses fall to 8 and 3 and the Stampeders in Edmonton tomorrow just two points behind at 7 and 4. Old Alouette quarterbacks come back here with the BC Lions. But these Alouettes are victorious. Trevor Harris, the winning quarterback. They win for the fifth time this season. 31 to 10 over BC. A great first half got it done for Montreal and very much a, a team win. The offense did just enough, but you look at some big plays on special teams that gave them a field. Position edge in the first half defense comes up big in the second half Providing them all the points they need to secure the win Difficult night for Antonio Pipkin and to be sure for Vernon Adams what an emotional roller coaster at the last week and a half For the former Montreal quarterback. We've got some playing time not much in the first half But to no avail for this BC team certainly missing Nathan Rourke Alouettes at home. They win it by 21. Super Saturday is coming up tomorrow. Three games with you all day long on TSN. Thanks for watching Sports Center's next with Jennifer Hedger and Glenn Sheila. Good night, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the football. Come on inside Sports Center. Jennifer Hedger, Glenn Sheeler, along with you. Yes, week 14 kicking off in the CFL. And wow, for the BC Lions, mm -hmm. how quickly things have changed. They had Nathan Rourke en route to a historic season, but he's now gone. And the quarterback carousel continuing. Antonio Pipkin got the start, but a former friend of Montreal, uh, Vernon Adams Jr., was lurking as a backup as well in Montreal. Tonight. Yeah, they didn't want to start Vernon Adams Jr. tonight because mm -hmm. he's just not comfortable with the playbook yet. But as you saw, 
they were in tough tonight. Mm -hmm. They needed somebody to get this offense moving. Vernon Adams Jr. Yeah, did make his VC debut tonight DC after being acquired from Montreal last Wednesday. But as you know, he would start this one on the bench. Instead, it was another former Alouette, Antonio Pitkin, making his first start of the season for the Lions. First quarter, BC's up three. They are pinned deep in their own end, and Pitkin can't escape the pressure. He gets sacked by Mustafa Johnson. First safety given up by the Lions this season. The Owls cut the lead to one. So we go late in the frame. BC are now down five. Out comes Adams Jr. for his first drive with the Lions. On his very first snap, he gets sacked by his former teammate Nick Usher. Adams went two and out on the drive. Owls up five. Heading into the second quarter, here's the next Lions drive. Leos are now down eight. Adams Jr. screen pass to Keon Hatcher. Oh dear. Hatcher fumbles the ball. Just the fifth loss fumble by the Lions this season. The Owls recover and they start in BC territory for the third time in the half. Here's the ensuing drive. Trevor Harris finds Eugene Lewis in the ends down. It's a touchdown. Fifth TD of the season for the Owls leading receiver. Montreal are up 18 at the break. The BC Lions looking to get the offense going. So they went back to Pipkin to start the second half. Second and goal for the Lions. Pipkin to Brian Burnham in the end zone. It's ruled an incomplete pass. Now after review, the call on the field stands. So BC is going to go for it on third down. BC needs the end zone. Instead, Pitkin is taken down. Second sack of the game for Johnson. The Lions come up with zero points, turn it over on downs, and Montreal holds BC to a season low 10 points. As you know, they hang on for the victory. 31-10 is the final. Eugene Lewis adding 42 receiving yards to a season total in this one. He is nine off the league lead. It was the third straight game that he has recorded a touchdown. As for the BC Lions, they pick up their first road loss of the season. Next up for the Leos, they've got a date with the Stamps. Alouettes now enter their bye week on a winning note. With more, let's go to Kate Burness and our CFL panel. Alongside David Sanchez, Dave Naylor, Milt Stiegel, and Week 14 kicks off with a big Montreal Alouettes win. They get redemption from a week ago when they lost to the Ottawa Red Blacks. Now back on track against a banged-up BC Lions team. And I know you guys are going to chat about that in just a moment. But first, let's start with Montreal. And just right from the get-go of this game, their offense was clicking, their run game was working. It really ran perfectly, especially in the first half. Yeah, you know what? The Alouettes have as good of a chance as, as anybody of, of getting out of the East. And there's just two things that they need to tighten up, and we saw it today. One is that defense, particularly second down defense. The Montreal Alouettes are last in the CFL on second down defense. They're eighth in points allowed, but they play solid defensively. And another thing, they have to have some semblance of a running game. This team is only going to go as far as Trevor Harris takes them. But you got to be able to at least be a threat on the run game. We don't know when William Stanback will come back, if he does, but they ran the ball fairly well today and like I said they have as good of a shot as anybody right now to get out the east well they're one win behind in the win column behind the Toronto Argonauts and you look at their schedule Hamilton Edmonton Ottawa Ottawa all winnable wow. games coming up for the Montreal Alouettes mm. on the contrast the BC Lions they are going to have back-to-back -back games coming up against the Calgary Stampeders Shoot. and there are all kinds of questions around this team the biggest of being, where are they going at quarterback? You know, mm. Vernon Adams is going to have a little more time to adjust, but he didn't really show much tonight to inspire confidence. Antonio Pipkin looked better in the second half. And, Milt, the defense that was so dominant when Nathan <laughs> Rourke was the quarterback, they're not yep. as good when they're not up by a couple of touchdowns midway through the second quarter. And, and I know the BC Lions aren't thinking about this, but I'm sure the organization as a whole is. But this team is trying to host a playoff game. Now, I know they're not mathematically out of not 
have an opportunity to win the West, but they're not going to catch the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So they would like to host a playoff game because hosting a playoff game in nice, warm, BC oh, place is a whole oh, lot mm. different than having to go to Calgary or Saskatchewan or wherever you might go. So they got to get some things together. We talked. You talked about Pipkin. He had a better second half, but this team did not trade away a first-round pick mm. to get Vernon Adams and not have him on the field. So Vernon Adams needs to get up to speed with this offense, get on the field and help this team win. Because at one point. This was the top offense. This was the top defense in the CFL. And now they are towards the bottom. They're getting down there towards the bottom. I said the Montreal's only going as far as Trevor. It's the same thing in BC. Mm. Vernon Adams, I think to your point, he's got to be the guy. Right, right, yeah. So well, and you said, too, they have back to back against the Stamps. They also have two games remaining against the Winnipeg, Winnipeg. Blue Bombers yeah. as well, too. <laughs> the schedule is daunting. And then how important is it now for like the Argos and the Red Blacks looking at this game? You got Al the Alouettes chasing them, and the Red Blacks are surging. The East abs absolutely fascinating, to say the least, as we send it back to Sports Center. It's Kate. If he's lined with an interception tonight, he's standing by New on SC with John Liu. What a better way to make new friends, huh? Yes, sir. I can't, can't ask nothing better than that. Um, how important was the fumble before in your pick after? Just it was a complete momentum kill for them. Yeah, it's definitely defenses that come out there and make some plays, get the offense off the field, give our offense an opportunity, put some, put up some points. And that's what we did. Um, how comfortable were you playing this game? I, I know you knew the system of Noel Thorpe, but you only had one week to practice. So how were you feeling during the game? Oh, I was very comfortable uh, during the week. Uh, like you said, I was uh, I already knew the plays coming in, uh, playing with Thorpe last year. So I was pretty much easy to prepare. And then I, I played against BC. Uh, twice. I seen BC twice already with Edmonton. So it was nothing I haven't seen already. So it was, it was all about just preparing for the week and coming out and making plays. You, you were there, right? The other one had a very tough loss last game. And right at the beginning of the game, you came very strong. How important was this to kind of forget what happened last, last yeah, week? Yeah, we just got to take one game at a time. Come out here, uh, do our best, make plays for defense, you know, make turnovers, offense, put up points, and special teams do the things. All three phases got to come together is going to make sure we win the game. Thanks. Appreciate you. Congrats, man. We got a big CFL triple header on Saturday. Here's the latest odds, courtesy of FanDuel. The Argonauts, a small favorite in Ottawa against the Red Blacks, who are looking for a third straight win. A couple of rematches out west, starting with the Riders, who are seven and a half point underdogs on the road in Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Calgary. They close out week 14. The Stamps are uh, up to nine and a half point favorites now, while the Elks have lost 13 straight at home.